It's True Faith TV. Newcastle United have lost again. I'm Alex Hurst. Across from me is Charlotte Robson. And this is the show where we talk about three Newcastle United talking points of the week just gone. First of all, Charlotte, can I shock you? Give it a go. Newcastle United once again committed what could only be described as a catastrophic effort in their attempt to try not to lose a football match. Yes. Who takes the blame this week? Oh, it's a roulette, isn't it? It's a roulette. God, I don't. I just don't know. It could be any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. It was Kieran Clark. Of course, of course it was, it was fucking Kieran yeah, Clark. It's always going to be Kieran Clark. As soon as Kieran Clark's on the team sheet, you're like, he's going to make a mistake. That is literally the reaction of about, well, more than 50,000 people. You know, if it, as if Eddie Howe hasn't learned his lesson from the Norwich game, mm. he was like, it's only Man City. We'll bring, we'll bring Kieran Clark back in. And I think it's got to the stage where Kieran Clark doesn't want to play. Like, Kieran Clark's, like, buzzing for the weekend. He's, mm. like, going to going to do loads of stuff around the house get a Sunday roast yes he's like I'm going to go Morrison's I'm going to do all these things then all of a sudden before the Man City game Howe puts the team sheet and then someone says Kieran you're in he's like yeah I love Good the one. idea that he only finds out from the team sheet like <laughs> the hour before like we yeah. do like NUFC like comes up on his Twitter and he's like oh what <laughs> that's the thing he's like oh he's like God, he's, he's got to like go home and tell the wife or text the wife who's like obviously not watching or anything because he's not getting nowhere near the pitch no. and and he's like i'm playing and she's like you're fucking what <laughs> are this stupid <laughs> it's harsh on kieran clark and i'm not like mr never play him again you know after yeah. norwich everyone was like you should never play again well he has and you are probably right <laughs> not to play him again what do you think it's like for kieran when he goes home after something like that He's turned into the new John Joe Shelby, <laughs> hasn't he? While well, we hypothesise what the home life is like, um, I think Kieran Clark goes home after that, and uh, and the wife is like, "How was it?" Again, another woman who is not watching that on the telly. She's not interested. She's got. She had a roast to cook that they were planning <laughs> on having. That she's, you know, we don't want the food to go to waste. And uh, and he says, "I gifted them a goal. <laughs> it, it, it's it's the Christmas season, so I gifted them a goal." Um, and I think she's just, uh, I think she freezes him out. I think freezes she, him out? Yeah, I think she freezes him out. It's Christmas. He needs punishing. <laughs> He's not welcome at the table anymore. Yeah, that's grim. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. I think that, like, I don't know if they go that far. Probably, but maybe not. I think that, like, his family, his kids, if he's got kids, probably, and his wife and his in-laws are just absolutely... Like, don't trust him. Yeah. But like, don't give him any precious bowls to carry. Don't give him any important presents to wrap. Yeah. Don't let him drive. Don't <laughs> let him do anything, anything which could go wrong, because it yes. probably will go wrong. Wrap the man in bubble wrap <laughs> and, like, put him in a padded room. That's, that's his Christmas plan. Not because he's yeah. mad and it's the no. 1930s, but... Because he's a liability and a danger to himself and others and our football club. And our chances of staying up. <laughs> get him out the six-yard box. Get him out the team, Eddie, if you're watching. Howie, we've, we've suffered enough. So is Kieran Clark. Yeah, for his own, it's not fair on him. It's for his own protection. Mm. Let's move on, Charlotte, to point right. number two this week, which we're going to talk about mad dog Jason Tyndall. Uh, viewer, Charlotte has been fairly obsessed and has told me a lot about Jason Tyndall and his angry eyes. His mad eyes. He's got mad eyes. He's a handsome man, but his eyes are insane. His eyes are insane. I was at um, the game, and I was quite close. I was sat just behind where the uh, the media sits, so an excellent view, and I got a front row seat for Jason Tyndall, and he is absolutely insane. He is an angry <laughs> little man. He's not that little. He's, he's not just, little. He's an angry man. There were two, two instances through the game that I found hilarious. Number one, in the first half, I don't know if you remember, you probably don't, uh, because we were shit and the game was rubbish. I regress, repressed <laughs> it already. And... Miguel Almiron nicks the ball off one of those players. Yes. And the player brings him down wrong side. It's kind of a soft free kick, but also he's wrong side. The referee doesn't give a yellow card. What? The referee does not The referee give, against us? Yeah, against us. Doesn't give us... We have such high standards of refereeing, it's hard to believe at the minute that mm. it wasn't a yellow card. Jason Tyndall turns around to the fourth official and just goes, if that was fucking them, oh. like points like that, if that was fucking them, and turns away in disgust... 
Poor fourth official. So much white of his eyes on display. Poor fourth official. Minutes later, Isaac Hayden cleans out Kevin De Bruyne in his book straight away. Tyndall's gone off it. He has gone absolutely off it. Oh my God. He's kicking off. He's pointing at the end of the pitch. The fourth official is just saying, go away. Go away. <laughs> so what does Jason do? He moves on to the fucking linesman. <laughs> It's Excellent. like two people who didn't actually have any in involvement the in the decision. And he's going at the lines when he's got the lines in the ear. He's like, if that was if that was us, it wouldn't be it. It's like this this sense of injustice. Well, he gets it's the second match um in a row that I've seen him go like march onto the pitch as soon as the halftime whistle is blown and start giving the referee an earful as well. He did it at Liverpool. Yeah, I, I love it. I love I love that. Like Eddie Howe, calm and collected. Mm. He's taking drinks of water often. You know, anytime something, He's a hydrated yeah, man. Yeah, anytime something bad happens, watch how, drink water. Mm. He's like, calm down, let Jason do it. Are we sure it's water? <laughs> what are you speculating? CBD tonic. <laughs> something calming. Something <laughs> legal and calming. You need something to get through the second half when you're 2-0 yeah. down and Kieran Clark's in your back four. And so Tyndall at halftime, like you say, storms onto mm. the pitch and he's just pointing. He's like, like the referee must be thinking, what's he doing? What's this man going to do to me right now? He's pointing at parts of the pitch where wrong decisions were given. And through the, like the whole game, Tyndall has just got this like like passion for injustice. Mm. He just keeps saying to the fourth official, if that was at the other end, if that was them, if that was them. Well, good. He's probably <laughs> right. A lot of those decisions, you're like, how was that? You're right, but like Isaac Hayden is about three quarters of an hour late on Kevin De Bruyne <laughs> in the middle of the pitch where nothing bad can happen. <laughs> and Hayden takes him out of the game so much so that he just falls over. Yeah, it's a bad the next, decision. The next time a player runs towards Hayden, he just falls. Yes. Yeah. As does Joe Willock. Okay, so, yeah, graceful. Um, if I'm in those seats again, I think be prepared, be prepared for more Jason Tindall anecdotes. Well, I just, I love that how, how white is, how white his eyes are. <laughs> like there's, uh, if you look at it, maybe we'll put a picture on screen. Look at this picture. Just there's so much white, like there's extra white. I'm sure he puts like brightener onto his eyeballs. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, you can get it. Brightener? Yeah, like I, well, eye white brightener. You can get all sorts. Oh, God. 100%. He's like, a, he's like put a fil like an Instagram filter on <laughs> his real life face. Yeah, it must be terrifying. Mm. It must be terrifying when you haven't made the decision. Mm. And it's like fucking Jason Tindall, like fourth mm. officials again, mm. ringing his wife or his husband and saying, like, oh, you know, good luck today. You know, fourth official, total DOS. Don't have to do any work, make any decisions. Put, hold the board up or some yeah, shit three, like that. Three extra minutes. Yeah, three extra minutes, fucking. And the ref tells you what to put up, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's like, oh, no. It's Newcastle United and it's Jason Tyndall. Thought I was done with his arsehole in the championship, but he's back. <laughs> Might not make it home. Let's move on to point number three, Charlotte. You would yes. like to talk about a former Newcastle United striker. Yes. I love Alan Shearer joke it's about well I, that's not a joke but it's actually about michael owen and the comments that i'll keep it brief because i'm sure everybody has been incensed by his comments in the uh, daily mail over all the mail online over the weekend craig hope wrote an article about how michael owen was so frightened to come back to the <laughs> northeast that he asked amazon who was supposed to be commentating for to take him off the norwich game because he was scared for his safety wow. what do you think he thought was going to happen if he set well, foot in the northeast this again? is this is at odds with owen's previous version of events where he said newcastle fans what, newcastle united fans they love me mm. they love me every time i walk through newcastle i'm praised showered with praise yes yeah Pepper so i don't know what i don't know what bullshit he's talking about now and i have a feeling it's a fabrication myself my problem, my main thing, my main takeaway from the article, which bothered me, was the um, the comment about how he'd said he's trying to work out why we could possibly hate him. And one of the comments he says is like, yes, I said I wanted to go to Liverpool. Of course, I, uh, that's true. It's just like Alan Shearer saying, well, I, I, I want to sign for Newcastle, not Man U. Um, he wanted to sign for his boyhood club. Well, it's not just like that, is it, Alex? Because Alan Shearer then didn't sign for Man U. He did sign for Newcastle. So I don't understand the comparison there. It's just insane to me. The man's not very clever, I don't think. I don't think so either. And I also think there's this kind of funny geographical thing going on because he can't go to Manchester because they don't like him. They don't like him in Liverpool. They don't like him in Newcastle. They don't like him in Madrid. They don't like him in Stoke. Where can the man go to commentate? Yeah, just Twitter where he... <laughs> 
he congratulated Emma Raducanu <laughs> on her sports personality of the year by posting a picture of himself. <laughs> so, which we've got on screen right now. Yeah. Oh, great! Look at it. That, that is a special kind of egotism. Mm-hmm. Special kind. Doesn't like films either, does he? You no, he doesn't that. like films. He does not like films. He's seen about five films in his life. <laughs> That's true. It's true. This has been True Faith TV. Thank you, Charlotte, so much. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, let us know what you think. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.